Hey everyone, today we're going to put a new master cylinder. Well, it's used, but we're going to change the master cylinder on this 1990 Corvette C4 convertible. And, uh, well, I don't know if I'm going to bleed the brakes today, but I think what I'm going to do is open the bleeders up and see if it'll gravity bleed. If not, I've got a tool that I want to try out that'll be in another video. But we're just going to change the master cylinder today. I'll show you how we're going to do that. It's really simple. Stick around. Okay, guys. So, like I said, it's real simple. You've got two bolts back here. You've got one on each side. One here. One here. And you've got your two lines for your front and rear. There's one here and one here. And you have your brake light. Uh, it's not for your tail light brake lights. This is to let you know if you're low on fluid or whatever, your dash light, the, the brake light in your dash will come on. So we're going to pull this off. That can stay there because the lines aren't coming off. We're just going to break them loose from here. So let me get a couple wrenches. And uh, this one looks like it has a ground wire on it for some reason, but just make sure you put everything back to where it goes. This is for holding wires. Okay, so let's get. All right, let me get a couple wrenches. Well, probably just one wrench. Well, these might be different sizes. It looks like these are a different size, so you can't mix them up. That's that's good. Uh, I'll get a socket and ratchet for this a couple line wrenches let's get after it okay so the first thing you want to do is crack your lines loose first that way this is not wobbling around on you um, the back one I'm going to use 916 on I'm kind of limited on my line wrenches I've got several but a lot of them's duplicates so probably as with anybody not a lot of people have line wrenches unless you do this stuff all the time which I do but I need more line wrenches this is a 12 now by all means you can use a regular wrench on these you have to be real careful what I've done before is actually made my own line wrench see that's just a box end wrench really with that cut out uh, that has worked for me before too and that one's slipping around so let me see if i can find something else that's going to fit a little better than that i'm going to try my open end 12. <clears throat> okay it worked awesome now let me go get something because i know this is going to start leaking it already has so let me get something to lay down here to catch that stuff. Just to try to, you know, stop some of that brake fluid from going all over the place. Now, these are 12. I'm just going to use a wrench on them. Go ahead and take this off. my wire holder I've got a wire with a plug a small wire it's hanging down there it was really close to the headers and I'm gonna take this one off if you're not gonna unhook the battery just be careful over here so your wrench don't hit the uh, Hit your positive cable. All right, so we got this one. Take that little ground cable off. Yours may not have it. I don't even know if that's original. I can't, I never had to do anything with mine up here, so I don't even know if it had a ground cable up here. But you know, these are 
these bodies are uh, fiberglass so you know there's a lot of grounds on these cars any ground or any wire you take off make sure you put it back on and take these off these lines are weird because like the 12 was really loose on it well not really loose it was loose but 7 16 would not go on and a half inch was well way too loose so it's kind of kind of like an in-between really strange on these lines now we're going to take this off and we're going to set it up beside yeah see how much fluid's coming out of this one none's coming out of that one that was our issue we're going to set these up side by side and make sure we got the right part okay so as you can see here's the old one well the malfunction one here's the new one which is actually uh it's used you can tell that see that tells you rear R and F for uh, rear and front they both have that they both have this this doesn't matter in what orientation it is you know it doesn't matter if it's turned this way or turned like that one is I'll be mindful if you buy these new it doesn't come with these reservoirs or caps so try not to break yours if you take it apart So yeah, it looks looks pretty good. Yeah, that's I would say that's the issue we were having right there because nothing's coming out of that hole. So this there's a problem with one of the cups up in here. It had brakes, it had back brakes, but you know uh, PBR, Paps Blue Ribbon, Paps Blue Ribbon, actually not, but you get the idea. Um, so it's the same master cylinder awesome so let's take this one over here and let's put it on and these caps uh, if you do have to take them off they hook in right here and right there now I see a little dry cracking there I'll have to keep an eye on it make sure it doesn't start leaking but if it does you just uh, you put a little screwdriver right down in there Pry this out a little bit and these will pop up off they're harder to get on than they are to take off okay now see right in here that's a leak so there's seals in here uh, and that, that's a piston and there's a seal let's see okay so it looks like this one's all the way back and the other one's not but I don't see any leak here maybe there no I don't see it leaking so probably probably leaked at one time so all right let me get you on the stand and we'll get this one put on but see that one's not clear all the way back um, you should bench bleed these you put them in a vise you fill it up with fluid and you run lines from here and back into there or you can put plugs on there and pump it until you don't see any more bubbles but you can also do it on the car which is what I'm going to do alright so I'm not sure why this is not popping clear out so could just be stuck from scenting but I'm going to see if I can get that out of there Yeah, that should come all the way back. Huh. Well, let's put it on here, and we'll get some kind of pressure going. And maybe that'll pop back. There is a little, a slight adjustment here.
all right so now I'm just going to reverse the process I'm going to put these on and I'm going to tighten them down I'll put some fluid in it a lot of times if you fill them up with fluid and you get good fluid coming out of here they're not as hard to bench bleed which are not really hard anyway but so what I'm going to do is I'm probably just going to bleed these things this thing through the bleeders get some fluid I forgot to bring my fluid out <sighs> okay and then I got a little rag in there I'm just gonna make sure there's no dirt in here okay this is that bleeder tool I bought I never used one like this before, but you put your air hose on here. Okay, now I had to change my end. It comes with one, but it's for China size air hose, I guess. So you put your air hose onto this end. You put your hose up here, and this goes down to your bleeder. Make sure your bleeder's loose, of course. Make sure you loosen your bleeder. Make sure they're free, because these ones weren't free. I actually had to drill some dirt and rust out of them. And they had caps on them. But this just goes over top of your bleeder. So we're gonna put that on there. All right, make sure it's on there real good. Let's put this on here. And what we're gonna do, I don't know how well this camera's gonna pick it up, but see that? Cause I've already done the other side. Now, normally when you bleed brakes, I just wanted to try this out and show it to you and get familiar with it. Uh, you want to always start when you're bleeding brakes start at your farthest wheel which usually you know in a left-hand drive vehicle it'd be your right rear your passenger rear and then you go to over to the driver's rear then the passenger front and the driver's front normally so if you can see that that in there now we're just going to turn this valve on and wait and you'll see the stuff coming down out of here and wait until we don't see any more misses in there when it looks like it's a full a full line then we're pretty much bled supposedly I've never used one of these before all right so let's go ahead put our line on see if you can see it coming up through there yeah can you see it see that dark spot it's sucking the fluid out so you're going to keep going until you don't see any more uh, clear spots in between it it's hard to see with new fluid see we're not done yet see it's still coming up through there see how it looks like it's missing we're going to keep going until it all until it comes out until we see it coming out all one steady color Keep an eye on your master cylinder too, make sure it doesn't go empty. That's pretty much it. You can see it running down in your canister. See that? So I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going till it doesn't till it doesn't look like that anymore. I'll show you what it looks like once it's done. Now this tube that's going down in here. If you watch that, you'll see a little bubble every now and then. If you're seeing bubbles, keep going and keep filling up your uh, master cylinder reservoir. When you're done, you can take this cap off and drain it into something and keep it or dispose of it. If it's still good, this is not too bad, but it is a little dark. So I'm just putting all new in. But if you started out with new lines, you're going, you should have new fluid. And you can just unscrew this and put it, let it drain right back in your master cylinder. So let's see how we're doing. See them bubbles? 
don't know if you can see them, but I can see some bubbles in that line, so that's telling me there's still a little bit of air. So I'm going to keep going until I don't see any more bubbles. When I don't see any more bubbles, okay, I'll tighten my bleeder back up, and it should be bled, in theory. I don't know how well these work. I've never tried one. I just seen it. It was cheap, so I bought it. Okay, guys. So I gotta wait till tomorrow. But now you know how to change the master cylinder. That was the main thing, and you know how to bleed them uh, with that tool. But this one's the one we took off. This one's ours. See that piston right there? Now look at that one. That one's stuck. Looks like almost half the way down. I couldn't get it done stick. I thought maybe if I put it on and got pressure in it, it would start working, because sometimes it'll do that, but but it wouldn't. So there's mine. And there's the one they sent me. So, yeah, that's, I have an issue with that. So now I gotta get a hold of them give them a little piece of my mind why they're trying to sell me something that's in worse shape than mine this one you can't get brakes at all you because you can't even bench bleed it you know this one at least i had back brakes i could move it around <laughs> and not worry about going through the garage door but yeah so and also if you look down here at the bottom right there so it looks a little wet i don't know if you can see that so it looks a little wet that was actually leaking this one wasn't it had one of them had leaked at one time because i could see it on the booster but this one wasn't leaking there but this one was so that wasn't even gonna be any good anymore they just cleaned it up and sold me a piece of junk for 60 bucks so ordered one from the parts store 176 bucks so it'll be in in the morning so anyway, I wanted to get the tires done tomorrow, but I want to get brakes on here first, you know. My dad always taught me, if you're building a car or something, you know, you got to stop it before you start it. So that's what I'm going to do. At least we got the tires. I can take them down any time. All right, guys. So there you go. Shea Bear, the myth, the man, the legend. I'm gone for now. We'll see you guys in the next one. I'll give you an update on this uh, when I get the brakes fixed and... Uh, what they told me about that old master cylinder over there you know I don't have a problem with buying new parts you know people you know you try to save money I mean this is just an old 1990 C4 granted it's a convertible it's got a bunch of extras on it but this ain't never going to be a four thousand dollar car or whatever I do to it if I, you know to make this a four thousand dollar car I would have to put a good five thousand dollars in it doesn't make sense I'm just wanting something that we can just cruise down to the river to the lake in and you know over to a car show here and there and so you know it's it, it's it, it's hard to put that kind of money in an old car like this you know if this was a stingray or something that's not a problem but it's not you know so all right guys thanks for watching appreciate it we'll see you in the next one hopefully your everyone's weekend went well We'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Take care.